morning, everyone. Uh, it is a honor to me to introduce Professor Pedro Albertos from the Technical University of uh, Valencia. Uh, he has worked in the domain of automatic control theory and in the early times of introduction of studies and research groups on computer science in Spanish universities, he was very much involved in the process. And since then, he has been a model for uh, many of us for his technical competence, ethical integrity, and personal charm. And I think it was a very good choice uh, for, uh, from the organizer to select him as a keynote speaker. Because many of uh, uh, the communications of our uh, conference deal with uh, tasks that have deadlines and activation periods, but apparently those periods and deadlines come fixed from heaven uh, uh, somewhat mysteriously. So it is quite interesting uh, to uh, listen from somebody coming from control theory uh, that uh, gives us some light about how those periods and deadlines are fixed to uh, make uh, systems controllable. And uh, especially because sometimes for non-schedulable uh, systems, uh, a good choice might be to change the uh, control uh, algorithms by an, some other algorithms which are more complex and time consuming for each activation but uh, work fine with uh, wider uh, activation periods. So uh, I think we can learn uh, very much from him and for those which are interested in uh, the topic, uh, they might uh, uh, be interested to know that he has recently, this year, uh, uh, published uh, a book, a divulgative book on control theory, uh, published by Springer Verlag. Uh, the title is Feedback and Control for Everyone. So I give uh, the speech uh, uh, to him. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> for so uh, kind uh, words. Uh, for me, it's okay. For me, it's uh, a great honor and a pleasure to share with you some uh, of the ideas about uh, control co design. And I would like to thank uh, the organizers to bring me this opportunity to be uh, here with you. <clears throat> so, uh, as the chair uh, mentioned, I'm uh, mainly a person working in control. In fact, uh, all my career I have been working in control, but I had the uh, luck to be in touch with uh, people in uh, computer science from the very beginning. <clears throat> with uh, Juan Antonio de la Puente, with uh, Alphonse Crespo, with uh, Jorge also. And in such a way that we were always uh, interested in the connection between uh, control and uh, its implementation. And uh, the hardware and the software uh, relating uh, or ensuring the uh, quality of the control. <clears throat> so when they proposed me to give a, a talk I thought that uh, this title, Control Co-Design, Algorithm and, and Data Implementation, could be a good uh, one. And I must say that <coughs> this is a, a work done by a group of people at the Department of System Engineering and uh, Control, also the Institute of uh, Automatica and Informatica Industrial, both uh, the three of us in the Politecnica University of Valencia, and this is a PhD student which is uh, working also in some of the ideas that we will develop here. <coughs> but as I mentioned, this is uh, a work not only uh, based on the ideas of uh, my co-authors, but also with some other co-workers. Uh, most of you know very well about artists too, and uh, Carl Eric Carson and uh, Anton Serving. Uh, we have exchanged a lot of uh, ideas with them, and in fact, I can say that some of the slides are borrowed from, from them. 
and also some other people from the same institute that they are all working in uh, both ideas, the uh, uh, control uh, development and its uh, implementation. <coughs> so, uh, what is a classical control loop? Uh, if this is a um, system, uh, we see here that the, we have uh, elements, the process, the sensors, the actuators, where the energy is flowing, usually. And then we have uh, another block, which is the controller, where the information is uh, flowing. And the original idea is that this block is another element, it's another component, it's a control system. Uh, this system is a physical system, uh, taking some information from the sensors and providing some inputs to the actuators, the control variables. And this was the original idea from the beginning of the, well, we can say the 20th century. But then uh, in the 1970s, then uh, we started with uh, digital controllers. And then uh, in that case, this block here is not anymore a de dedicated uh, component, but it is uh, an information processing uh, device. And really the behavior of this uh, component is totally different from a typical controller. And then uh, the initial steps were to try to replicate here what the uh, original control system was doing. And this was, for me, the first uh, step in the error in designing digital control systems. Because uh, most people, they tried just to implement what was what was uh, done here with uh, uh, an information processing subsystem. So <clears throat> if this is the scheme, uh, you see that in the basic control loop, oh, I must be patient with that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> in the basic control loop, this regulator, this uh, controller, is all actuating in continuous time. So the connection between the process the sensor the actuator and the regulator is continuous in time, so everything is closed loop and is uh, performing continuously the same activities. But when we implement this with uh, a digital controller, so uh, we have here the interface and the interface with the process and with the uh, uh, operator, and then this is a control algorithm which is operating in discrete time. <coughs> and this is the one of the slides taken from uh, Carl Eric uh, Arsen. Uh, this is what is the control department doing. We have some requirements about the process to be controlled. We design the algorithm, we mm, use the models of the plant, and then we design the control algorithm. And we, through to the software uh, department, say, well, implement that and give us what we are demanding here. And then uh, these people here in the software department, they are just uh, taking these uh, requirements, which are not requirements here, are requirements at the level of the algorithm, and then and implementing and make functional test of this, but there is no uh, connection between the original requirements and what is implemented by the software department. <clears throat> so from a control viewpoint, the regulator is, as I mentioned, a device which is processing the signals, but uh, has uh, its own dynamic behavior and is interacting with the, the process from input, uh, output of the regulator and also the reference. But from the uh, computer point of view, uh, the regulator is just a set of tasks. So we have a number of uh, activities here to implement and we can, uh, as we know, this is uh, performing in general in sequential mode and we must do arrange this to perform all these tasks. And we have some uh, resources that we must allocate and we have some uh, real time constraints. But this is, uh, as you can see, a different, totally different viewpoint of uh, that. In the case of the physical systems and in the classical analog uh, control, this regulator is a device. It's a, a pneumatic, electronic, mechanical uh, regulator with inputs and outputs. And continuously operating. <clears throat> so which are the main problems? <clears throat> the control engineer doesn't care about the implementation. It's trivial. So I gave you what I want uh, to perform and then you uh, should do that. If not, buy a faster computer. So you have resources and implement that. 
And on the other kind, uh, on the other side, the, the software engineer, <coughs> the software engineer uh, doesn't understand in general, not you, but doesn't <coughs> understand the constraints in uh, in timing, and they don't uh, realize what is the influence of these uh, delays, jitters, and so on in the control performances, not in the algorithm itself, but in the a connection with the, uh, the algorithm and the process, which is the aim of the controller. The controller is not to implement a nice controller doing what we want to do. If uh, the controller is slightly different and changes the behavior of the controller plant, it's not good uh, at all. And it's very difficult to make this connection between uh, small changes in the algorithm and the influence that this uh, algorithm changes uh, reports on the behavior of the plant. <coughs> so control theory and real-time scheduling theory have uh, evolved, separated uh, subject from 30 years, 30, 40, or since the beginning, since the 1970s. So I will uh, make some comments about basic digital control, then the computer requirements for control applications, the control requirements for real-time implementations, I will consider new control scenarios where all these assumptions that everything is trivial and everything is uh, solved just by a more a faster computer is not more anymore uh, uh, feasible. And then I will consider some uh, algorithmic uh, issues in designing the controllers, uh, implementation issues, and some conclusions. There are a few key uh, ideas that I will remark at the conclusions, uh, and these are the, mainly the ideas I want to forward and you to keep in mind. Very few, three or four ideas. <coughs> so, <coughs> uh, as I mentioned, digital control comes from a sample data control. And the original design <coughs> is just to discretize uh, continuous time controllers. Uh, the control is applied to continuous time plans, and the, for this uh, purpose, the plans are also discretized. But uh, uh, discrete uh, control implies that the plant is open loop between samplings. That means that uh, when we are uh, doing some activity in the controller, in the digital controller, so the plant is disconnected from the uh, control, so it's in open loop. Well, it depends about the behavior of the plant. If the plant is unstable, a helicopter, for instance, so we are in trouble if we don't apply control. If the plant is just a motor, a DC motor, probably the speed will change a little, but probably is not so dangerous. So, <clears throat> uh, this uh, discrete control is implemented in computers and uh, they are not anymore a single device, and they uh, operate in serial, in sequence, and they must share the resources. So when we design the control, we must have in mind the implementation. <coughs> As I mentioned, the plant is without control. It's not only in open loop, it's without control between sampling and updating. And uh, one uh, classical and uh, also, basic uh, error is sampling and updating should be as fast as possible. So if we want to replicate the digital control, uh, the analog control by a digital controller, so if we sample and we update very fast, it's like a continuous. So this was the first idea. But uh, <coughs> uh, this is not a good solution because that means uh, a lot of activity, a lot of uh, computing load, and uh, numerical problems probably in the implementation of the algorithm. And we also assume, because it's very uh, simple and very well uh, known, studied, and so on, uh, that the updating and the sampling is periodically. So we have a regular or periodic sample data systems. Why we do that? Well, it's the same. Uh, I mentioned that many times in some other uh, talks that is like uh, linear and nonlinear systems. We all know that all the systems are nonlinear, but nonlinear are very difficult to deal with. So if we can linearize and, or we can assume that it's linear, 
we consider linear, and then we apply a lot of tools that we have for linear systems.